But first, we turn to Britain's Queen Elizabeth II, who's celebrating her Platinum Jubilee after 70 years of service. Many in Kenya, however, would say it's a celebration of this service to them. It was around 70 years ago, in 1952, that the Mau Mau uprising against British colonial rule started. As many as 90,000 Kenyans were killed or tortured. More than 160,000 were forced into concentration camps during eight years of mayhem and bloodshed. The uprising was brutally put down by British colonial forces, sowing the seeds for Kenyan independence in 1963. After years of fighting for justice, there was a breakthrough in 2013. More than 5,000 Kenyans who'd been subjected to torture or other forms of mistreatment in the 1950s won compensation from the British government. But thousands of claims are still pending, and some have never benefited, like the Mamao veteran we are about to meet. She wants the queen to step in before it's too late. Muthoni Mathenge is one of the few surviving Mau Mau independence fighters in Kenya. Britain has apologized for some abuses, but Mathenge did not get the compensation paid to other rebels. She is calling on the queen for help before it's too late. Let Elizabeth bring what belongs to me. That's what I want to say. No middlemen in between. Let the compensation come directly to me. She should look for a sensible person and send it here. Muthoni's husband was Stanley Matenke, a Kenyan general in the British Army. When the rebellion started in 1952, he joined the Mau Mau group and disappeared into the forest to fight for independence. She stayed in the village with their children, but soon became a target. When British soldiers came looking for him, I said I hadn't seen him for days. I refused to tell them. Informing on fighters was like signing your own death warrant. She still bears the scars of what the British did to try to make her talk. They smashed her leg with an axe. Neighbors carried her to her husband in the forest. He nursed my wounds, even my legs. If you look at this leg, you can see it where it was pierced with an axe twice. She spent years in and out of the forest, supporting the Mau Mau fighters, cooking for them, hiding from the British. But she was caught and held in an internment camp. The British used prisoners as forced labor to build roads and bury Mau Mau fighters killed in the forest. At times, the dead bodies would fill up two trucks. We would bury them all day. We weren't allowed back inside before we buried them all. We would bury six people per grave. We had to pile them on top of each other. Her situation did not improve much with Kenya's independence. Her son, Mwangi, received no education in the forest or the camp. They did not get one of the land parcels offered to other rebels by the new Kenya government. And without a lawyer, they missed out on the compensation Britain paid to 5,228 Mau Mau fighters in 2013. Muthoni's husband, Stanley, never emerged from the forest. She pins her last hopes on Queen Elizabeth. Let her give me just compensation because she's the ruler. Let her send it to me and let it not be given to anyone else. For more on this, I am now joined by Paul Mwite. He was a Mau Mau veterans lawyer who fought for thousands to get compensation from Britain. Hello, sir. Thanks for joining us. Now, we just heard the sad story of a Mau Mau veteran who is still demanding compensation from Britain. But how feasible is that? There are very many uh, like him or her uh, beyond the 5,000 who got a compensation and their cries for justice remain unanswered. Unfortunately, that settlement was limited to the 5,000 clients we had at that time. The way to get compensation is for the Kenya government to take up this issue with the British government. When the British government read a statement of the floor of the House of Commons, when we concluded this case and the 5,000 were paid, 
They say they wanted this issue to be closed. Mm. And I wrote a letter to the Kenya government to say that this matter cannot be closed until there is an exhaustive, accurate list of all those who are detained and tortured. And there are many. Mm. And then their names should be inscribed on a wall and they, they too should get some modest compensation. Are you suggesting... Request... Sorry to catch you there. Are you suggesting that the Kenyan government is just not doing enough? The Kenyan government appears to be shy other than platitudes. They have not taken steps to ensure that the Mau Mau get justice for the historical injustices relating to land, relating to detentions, relating to the torture. It's like they are shy about reopening the woods, which need to be reopened. But you use the word shy, which beats me. Why would they be shy about addressing a case uh, of its own people? And because when these veterans were detained and were being tortured, their lands were taken over and given to collaborators, home guards, and sons of chiefs. And they are also part of Kenya. This is the dilemma that the Kenya government finds itself in, I suspect. But until that issue is addressed, it will not go away. Mongik, these um, young people who are all over, they are sons and descendants of those who land was taken away and who are never given compensation. So okay. the ball lies quite on the shoulders of the Kenya government. Uh, do you get the feeling that there's enough pressure within Kenya uh, to make the government act on this? The pressure is not directed at the Kenya government, and that is where it needs to be directed. Currently, those who are left out of the compensation direct their pressure and frustration on the British government. It cannot work. It can only work when it is government to government. And I wrote a letter in August of 2013 specifically pointing out that this is the way to bring this issue to a closure and to deliver justice to these veterans who truly deserve justice. Paul Muite, former Mau Mau veterans lawyer. Thank you.